Have you seen the famous movie Up? The movie where a house is lifted up with thousands of balloons? The idea sparked curiosity and wonder. Could you really float with just the pull of balloons? Well, just last month, illusionist David Blaine put this to the test and made our childhood dream a reality as helium-filled balloons brought him nearly 25,000 feet above the Arizona. Let's discover the science behind his ascension. Let's first understand the physics behind a balloon's ability to float. How can it lift itself up, much less a person? Well, it's because these helium-filled balloons work by a law called buoyancy. Buoyancy keeps things afloat, like a duck on a lake or a boat on the ocean. It may not seem like it, but the air is a fluid like water. And fluid is any substance that can flow and alter its shape. So when a balloon is in the air, it is submerged in fluid. It floats because the force from the fluid pushing up is greater than the force pulling it down, which we commonly know as gravity. If you recall Newton's second law, an object will accelerate if its net force is not zero. If we look at a balloon's free body diagram, there are many forces acting upon it. We know that there is a gravitational force pulling it down, represented by its mass and the constant g. But now there is a new force acting upon the object, buoyancy force. Have you heard of the saying, Eureka? It comes from Archimedes' principle, where a Greek mathematician Archimedes discovered that when a body is fully or partially submerged in a fluid, a buoyant force from the surrounding fluid acts on the body. He discovered this himself while he himself was submerged in a bath, later on running out naked to reveal his revelation. Newton's third law says that each action has an equal but opposite reaction force. If we combine Newton's third law with Archimedes' principle, the buoyancy force directed upwards has a magnitude equal to the weight of the fluid that has been displaced by the object. These two forces are opposite action and reaction pairs, both equal but in opposite directions. However, it is important to remember that gravity is its own separate force in this diagram. So if we compare the upward and downward force on the vertical axes, the buoyant force is greater than gravity pulling it down. The net force then points upward, thus allowing the balloon to accelerate. Let's take a look at David Blaine. At takeoff, he accelerates upward and does what seems like the impossible, but one simple balloon cannot allow him to float. Notice how, rather than hanging from thousands of small balloons, he has around four dozen giant helium-filled balloons. We've established that the buoyant force allows a balloon to float, but how about four dozen giant ones carrying a man? From Archimedes' principle, the buoyant force pushing up is determined by by how much fluid the balloon displaces, and in turn, the amount of displacement depends on the balloon's volume. It's sort of like taking a bath. You dip your foot in a tub, and there doesn't seem to be a difference in water level. But as soon as you set yourself in it, the water levels seem to rise. Your whole body, having a greater volume, displaces more fluid. The giant balloons work in the same sense because they have a much greater volume. They displace more fluid, thus the buoyancy force is great enough to overcome gravity and carry Blaine upward. Blaine accelerated in the air for 30 minutes, nearly 25,000 feet above the ground, the level at which airplanes fly. He later let go of the balloons, free-falling and accelerating downwards before releasing his parachute. To bring himself to a safe stop, Blaine needed to change his momentum, or in simpler terms, his damage. The floor would provide the impulse that would change this momentum. We could represent this with the equation impulse equals the change of momentum. The impulse stays the same, and so to decrease the amount of force exerted on Blaine, the time must increase. Notice how, as he touches the ground, he flexes his knees and runs off before fully coming to a stop. After all, if we look at our equation, the impulse stays the same. If Blaine extends the time at which he stops, then in order to have the same impulse, the force becomes smaller. It's like us jumping. Naturally, we bend our knees in order to increase the time and reduce the damage as we touch the ground. For Blaine's case, extending the time then decreases the amount of force he feels. With that, David Blaine had done what seemed like the impossible. Of course, there were other contributing factors that made this event a success, but with the help of buoyancy and gravity, he was able to ascend and inspire millions.